The AutoCAP 2 IABP incorporates the second generation of autopilot with improvements such as best signal analysis. The AutoCAP 2 Wave IABP combines all of the features of the AutoCAP 2 with the connections for the lightwave fiber optic IAB catheters. The arterial pressure waveform from the lightwave catheter is used in conjunction with the Windkessel aortic valve equation, WAVE, a unique inflation timing algorithm where inflation of the balloon is synchronized intra-beat to coincide with the aortic valve closure specific to that beat. There is no historical prediction which improves the accuracy of inflation timing in patients experiencing even minor arrhythmias better than currently available IABP systems. The Arrow AutoCAT 2 series offers two distinct modes of operation, autopilot and operator. Autopilot mode puts the pump in charge of all of these functions for you, allowing you more time to spend with your patient. Arrow's Autopilot features automatic ECG and AP signal recognition and selection. Automatic ECG lead selection uses best signal analysis. It will choose the appropriate trigger and timing method based on the patient's condition and signals connected and will maintain optimal timing. For example, if the current lead is lost or becomes noisy, Autopilot automatically switches to a more stable lead to maintain a consistent trigger. If all ECG leads and or sources are lost, Autopilot utilizes the arterial pressure waveform as the trigger. When the ECG is re-established and the ECG is stable, an ECG trigger is automatically resumed. Operator mode allows the clinician to select the ECG lead, source of ECG and AP signals, desired trigger mode, as well as setting the inflation and deflation points, and desired balloon volume. In autopilot mode, pumping is as easy as connecting the patient to the pump, including ECG, arterial pressure, and the balloon catheter then pressing the pump on key to initiate assist. The pump selects the best signal sources, trigger mode, and timing method automatically. Pumping begins at full volume and timing is optimized automatically without user intervention for maximum patient support. While autopilot mode allows for worry-free, precise pumping of your patient, at any time during the course of therapy, you can take control of the pump by selecting operator mode. When operator is selected, the LEDs by operator will be illuminated and operator will be displayed on the screen. When autopilot is selected, the LEDs by autopilot will be illuminated and autopilot will be displayed on the screen. The AutoCAP 2 series is made up of two components, a control module and a pneumatic drive unit. The control module contains the function keys and the display monitor. The display is a high resolution color LCD screen. The screen displays ECG, arterial pressure, and a calibrated balloon pressure waveform. The monitor also displays physiologic data, heart rate, assisted and unassisted blood pressure, operational mode, trigger selection, balloon volume, helium tank gauge, ECG source and lead, fiber optic status if AutoCAT 2 wave pump is used, alarm messages, and help messages. The control module may be positioned at varying heights. It can be positioned at various angles, and it can be rotated 360 degrees. A 12-foot, 4-meter cable connects the control module to the pneumatic drive unit. This allows you to remove the control module for handheld operation or IV pole mounting. The front of the console contains all of the patient input and output connections, as well as an RS-232 data connection for patient data management, a simulator connection, a flashcard slot, and a modem for remote troubleshooting. There is also a strip chart recorder. The power on-off switch is located on the front panel and is illuminated when on.
There are two indicator lights on the front panel. The green light indicates that the console is receiving AC power. The amber light indicates that the battery has at least an 80% charge. The battery, when fully charged, has 90 minutes of operation. When the pump is running on battery, an on battery message is displayed on the monitor screen. An alarm will sound when the pump first switches over to battery power to alert you. Alerts will sound when less than 20, 10, and 5 minutes of battery time remain. The pump should be plugged into an AC power outlet whenever possible to maintain full charge of the battery. The helium tank is located in the compartment on the left side of the pump. The AutoCat 2 Series can accommodate either a 500 PSI disposable or 2000 PSI refillable helium tank. A special adapter is included for the 500 PSI tank. The helium gauge is displayed by the blue bar graph on the screen. When the pressure in the tank goes below 125 PSI, the bar turns red. That is your indication that within the next several hours you should change the tank. If this indicator is ignored, the pump will alarm when the tank is empty. It is not necessary to interrupt pumping when changing the helium tank. To change the disposable tank, push the latch lever up and angle the tank upwards. Do not open or close the two valves on the black adapter and D-ring. Unscrew the old tank from the adapter, turning in a clockwise direction. Be sure to leave the adapter in place. Do not remove it with the tank. Remove the white cap from the new tank. Screw the new tank into the adapter, turning the tank counterclockwise until tight. Angle the tank downwards and secure the latch. To change the refillable tank, close the valve on the top of the tank using the key provided. Push the latch lever up and angle the tank upwards. Loosen the tank using the key provided from the D-ring assembly and slide the tank out. Place the full tank into the D-ring assembly, making sure to line up the pins in the assembly to the holes in the tank and tighten. Angle the tank down and secure the latch. Open the valve on the top of the tank. Located behind the helium tank is the condensation collection bottle. The AutoCap 2 series pumps are equipped with an active condensation removal system to keep the helium gas free of water vapor. This maintains fast gas shuttle speeds. The condensation is sent to the drain bottle at given time intervals to totally remove the water from the pneumatic system. Periodically, the bottle should be emptied. To do this, unlatch the helium tank and angle it upwards. Unscrew the bottle from the cap and empty. Screw the bottle back onto the cap, angle the tank downward, and secure the latch. It's recommended to empty the contents of the bottle after each patient use. All four wheels on the pump are equipped with brakes. To set the brake, push down on the lever located on the wheel. To unlock the brake, lift up on the lever. There are three steps to initiate pumping. First, turn the power on. Second, connect the patient to the pump, including ECG, arterial pressure, and balloon. Third, press pump on. The initial power-up parameters are autopilot mode, one-to-one -one assist ratio, full balloon volume, and alarms on. You have two options for connecting an ECG signal. The first and recommended option is to use the skin lead cable. You may use either a four or five lead cable. The pump automatically recognizes the type of ECG cable in use and gives you the appropriate lead choices. The green end of the cable plugs into the green input on the pump. The second option is to use the monitor interface cable and slave the waveform from the existing source. You should predetermine what connection you need for your specific monitor. 
Plug the appropriate end of the monitor interface cable into the ECG output on the bedside monitor and plug the other end firmly into the pump at the ECG monitor input. When using this cable and ECG monitor is selected, the ECG lead displayed on the pump will be the same as on the monitor. Both cables may be used simultaneously for maximum flexibility and backup during therapy. Autopilot will automatically select the ECG lead and source from those available using best signal analysis. However, even in Autopilot, you may change the ECG lead and or source if you so desire. Your selection will be maintained as long as it provides stable triggering. The ECG select key, located in the upper left-hand corner of the control module, is used to change leads, source and gain mode, and level of the ECG. The LEDs next to the key indicate which source is currently selected, and the display message at the top left-hand corner of the screen indicates which lead is currently selected. To change the ECG source, for instance from skin to monitor, press the ECG select key twice. If ECG skin is selected, as denoted by the green LED light lit next to skin, pressing the ECG select key once will bring up the ECG lead choices at the bottom of the screen. Use the function keys located immediately under the screen to select the desired lead. When using a five lead cable, press the function key twice if you wish to select the augmented lead. The lead highlighted in white is the currently selected lead. The AutoCap 2 Series pumps automatically select ECG Auto Gain on Power Up. If you choose to take total control of the gain, you can select Manual Gain. You can use the Increase and Decrease keys to adjust the ECG gain level in both Auto and Manual. As required with all ECG monitoring devices, it is important when applying the ECG electrodes to verify good skin contact and clean signals. Leads with unidirectional QRS complexes are generally the best choice for consistent triggering. Avoid biphasic QRS complex leads, leads with tall P or T waves, leads with wandering baselines, or leads with artifact whenever possible, as these may cause triggering issues. It's recommended to use the skin cable as the ECG source. There are variable delays in ECG transmission from the bedside monitor. A long delay from the bedside monitor can affect the accuracy of real-time timing. If the delay exceeds 40 milliseconds, ECG skin is highly recommended. In addition, if the patient is paced, the pacer flag on the ECG from the monitor may be distorted leading to problems triggering on the pacer spike, if needed. When multiple ECG sources are connected, ECG skin and lead 2 will be the default setting, if stable. You have three options in connecting an arterial pressure signal to the pump on the AutoCAT 2 wave and 2 on the AutoCAT 2. Autopilot will automatically choose the AP source from those available. Even in autopilot, you may change the AP source if desired. However, if the light wave signal is available, the pump will automatically select it, even if you have changed the AP source. The AP select key is used to perform this function. The illuminated LED next to the key indicates the currently selected arterial pressure source. Pressing the AP select key twice will select the next source. The fiber optic arterial pressure connection is exclusive to the AutoCAT 2 wave. This connection must be made to the pump before the IAB catheter is inserted into the patient for automatic zeroing of the pressure to occur. As soon as the balloon catheter tray is opened, the blue fiber optic connector and the CAL key should be passed off the sterile field and connected to the pump. In either order, the blue fiber optic connector should be gently slid up until a click is heard, and the CAL key should be inserted into the CAL key slot. Either direction on the CAL key is fine. The fiber optic sensor is automatically zeroed shortly after both connections are made. 
a message will appear on the display. If desired, a manual zero can be performed. After selecting fiber optic as the arterial pressure source, use the function key at the bottom of the screen labeled FOS0. An icon is displayed in the AP scaling area to indicate the current status of the light wave sensor. When the pressure sensor is zeroed, the light bulb on the left side of the display screen will turn green. If the sensor is not zeroed, it will remain or turn blue. As with all fiber optic sensors, it is important to perform a zero prior to catheter insertion. If insertion occurs before zeroing to atmosphere, the mean arterial pressure value can be adjusted to ensure hemodynamic accuracy. Use the MAP pressure from a known accurate arterial pressure line in the patient as the guide. Press the AP select key once to bring up the function keys at the bottom of the screen. Press the FOS CAL key, then press the increase or decrease key until you reach the desired value. If you entered a value that is not correct, or if you change your mind instead, press the cancel key. You can connect an arterial pressure transducer to the pump with a compatible cable. The transducer cable is plugged into the orange input on the pump. When utilizing an arterial pressure directly from the transducer, it is necessary to zero the arterial waveform for accurate pressure readings. To perform this, open the transducer to air, press the AP select key once, while transducer is the selected AP source. Press the function key under zero. A message, transducer zero, will appear on the screen. Close the transducer to air. Note. It is not necessary to zero the arterial pressure waveform before using it as a trigger. To calibrate a reusable transducer, please refer to the operator's manual. The final option is to use a monitor interface cable to slave the arterial pressure from the bedside monitor to the pump. Plug the appropriate end of the cable into the AP out on the monitor and the other end of the cable into the AP input on the balloon pump. If multiple or all AP sources are connected, the light wave FOS signal will be selected in the AutoCAT 2 wave and transducer will be selected in the AutoCAT 2. Other functions that you will find under AP Select are scaling and setting an AP alarm. On power up, AP auto scaling is on and the pump will automatically change the arterial pressure scale as needed to maintain a large waveform on the screen for ease in visualization. If desired, you can change to manual scaling and adjust the AP scale yourself. Press the function key under AP Scaling, then choose Manual Scaling. The seven manual scale choices will then be displayed. Choose the scale you desire. The white highlighted key is the current display scale. To set an arterial pressure alarm, press the function key under AP Alarm On. You have the option of selecting Mean Arterial Pressure or Augmented Pressure as the value to be monitored. Increase or decrease the set limit until the desired value is reached. This is a low limit alarm only. When the arterial pressure alarm is set, a yellow box will be displayed on the left side of the screen. The value that is being monitored will be displayed in the box as well as the low pressure alarm limit. If the pressure goes below this limit, an alarm will be issued. Plug the color-coded balloon connector into the pump. The balloon volume will automatically correspond to the balloon volume indicated on the connector plug. A 30 cc balloon comes with a white connector, a 40 cc comes with a blue connector, and a 50 cc comes with an orange connector. Pumping will begin at full volume unless you change it beforehand. Balloon volume may be adjusted in 0.5 cc increments. If you wish to change the volume, press the balloon volume key. Then use the decrease or increase key to adjust the volume. 
Once you reach the desired value, press the Apply key. If the volume is changed while pumping, the pump will vent the current volume, purge, fill with the new volume, and resume pumping. If you change your mind while adjusting the volume, simply press the Cancel key, or wait 30 seconds for the volume adjust to time out. You may return to full volume quickly by pressing the full volume key and then the apply key. You are now ready to begin pumping. Press the pump on key. Pumping begins at full volume unless adjusted by the clinician. The initial purge cycle will consist of one purge followed by nine mixing beats. This is done three times at startup to maximize gas shuttle speed. Then, pumping will continue uninterrupted. Thereafter, any time you go from off to on, the pump will do one purge cycle and begin pumping. If you wish to temporarily interrupt pumping, press the pump standby key. An alarm will sound if you do not resume pumping within three minutes to alert you to the fact that pumping has been interrupted for an extended period of time. If the pump is in off, and you press the standby key, the pump will do a four beat purge, fill with helium, and wait until you press on to initiate pumping. Autopilot will automatically select the trigger mode based on the signals available and the patient's condition. If the patient is experiencing an irregular rhythm, such as atrial fibrillation, and an ECG is available to the pump, a fib trigger will automatically be selected. This trigger utilizes R-wave deflation. The wave inflation, combined with R-wave deflation, makes the AutoCAT 2 wave the first pump to have real-time, beat-to-beat timing on inflation and deflation. In the event that R-wave deflation is not desired, you can override this function by selecting Arrhythmia Timing Off. Manual trigger selection is available only in Operator Mode. To change, select Operator Mode and press the Trigger key, located in the upper right-hand corner of the Control Module. The trigger options will be displayed at the bottom of the screen. Select the new trigger by pressing the function key under the desired trigger mode. Once the trigger mode is selected, verify that the trigger event is recognized by the console. Trigger acceptance is denoted by the flashing red heart, accurate heart rate, and the white assist marker on the ECG. Autopilot will automatically make all necessary timing adjustments. If you wish to set the timing manually, Operator mode must be selected first to activate the timing controls. Use the inflate and deflate arrow keys to adjust timing. Remember that timing should always be assessed in a 1 to 2 assist ratio. There are several options available to assist you with timing assessment. You may wish to stop the waveforms from moving by selecting the display freeze key. To unfreeze the screen, press the display freeze key again. Caution! Do not make any changes in timing while the screen is frozen as you will not see the changes being made. The white highlight on the unassisted beats can be used as a guide. They reflect where pumping would have occurred on that beat. The cursor line in magenta can also aid you in timing. The cursor control keys are located on the right side of the control module. Timing is correct when inflation occurs just prior to the dichronic notch and deflation results in the balloon aortic end diastolic pressure less than the patient aortic end diastolic pressure and the assisted peak systolic pressure less than the unassisted peak systolic pressure. To optimize timing, first move inflation later until the dichronic notch is exposed. Then move inflation earlier until the dichrotic notch is just covered up. Next, move the deflation earlier until the assisted systole equals the unassisted systole.
then move the deflation later until the assisted systole is less than the unassisted systole. Inflation is too early when it occurs more than 40 milliseconds before the dichotic notch. Note that the inflation point is a considerable distance above the dichotic notch. Inflation is too late when the dichotic notch is exposed. Deflation is too early when the assisted peak systolic pressure is not less than the unassisted peak systolic pressure. Deflation is considered late when the balloon aortic end diastolic pressure is greater than the patient's aortic end diastolic pressure. When R wave deflation is in use, the balloon aortic end diastolic pressure may not be lower than the patient's aortic end diastolic pressure. To further assess whether deflation timing is correct, note the slope of the systolic upstrokes. The slope on the assisted systole should be the same as the slope on the unassisted systole when deflation timing is correct. If the slope has decreased or the assisted systolic pressure is severely depressed, then deflation timing may be too late and R-wave deflation should not be used. The assist ratio key is located in the lower right-hand corner of the keypad. You can change the assist ratio in either direction. You may wish to run a script chart recording for documentation. To start printing, press the recorder on off key. When the strip is of sufficient length, Please remember to press the recorder on-off key again to stop the printing. At the beginning of the strip, you will find pump status information. Next are the selected waveforms, followed by the date, time, and hemodynamic information. You can change which waveforms are printed. To do this, press the Home key, then select Recorder Setup. You can set the recorder to print any combination of two waveforms, or just one waveform. The white highlighted choices are those that are currently selected. In addition, you may set the recorder to automatically print strips at given time intervals using the time keys. The options are every 2 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 1 hour, 2 hours, and 4 hours. To change the paper on the strip recorder, Push in on the latch at the top right-hand side of the recorder to open the paper compartment. Gently remove the old roll. Place the new roll of paper in the compartment. The paper should be inserted in the direction so that as you unroll the paper, the print surface, in other words, the shiny side, is visible as it is being unrolled. Close the door. Additional operations can be found by selecting the Home key. AP scaling options are available when the Home or AP Select key is pressed. The function and settings are the same for each. Recorder Setup In Weaning Setup, you can program the pump to institute a weaning step. Options include changing balloon volume and or assist ratio and length of time for the weaning interval. Activate by pressing Start. The pump will alert you when the time period is finished. Under Show Stats, you will find pump status information, including battery voltage, current pump settings, helium level, 
FOS status, current assist ratio, and the code for the last alarm. Audio setup allows changing the alarm volume. Select alarm volume and use the louder or softer keys to adjust the sound. The volume can be adjusted between 10 and 100 percent. You may test the level by pressing the audio test key. You can also adjust the volume on the key clicks or turn the key clicks off. Pressing the hemodynamics key will cause the pump to calculate the difference between the augmented pressure and the systolic pressure. Also, the difference between the augmented pressure and the diastolic pressure for the full pulse pressure. In addition, the hemodynamic numbers will freeze for 30 seconds. The final function to be found under the home key is clock setup. Choose the desired parameter to change, and then use the up and down arrow keys to correct the time or date. There is a help key to aid you. The first time it's pressed after power-up, it will display the steps needed to get the pump up and running. If you forget what the function of a control key is, press help, and then the key you wish to know about. A message regarding that key will be displayed. The final keys on the control module are the alarm keys. There are three classes of alarms and one class of alerts. When activated, a message will be displayed on the screen indicating which alarm or alert has occurred and troubleshooting steps to correct the situation. Pressing the reset key will silence the audio portion of the alarm and unfreeze the screen. All pneumatic alarms will cause the pump to go to off. The balloon is deflated and the helium is vented to atmosphere. After troubleshooting, you will need to press the pump on key to resume pumping. It's possible to temporarily suspend the pneumatic alarms. Press the alarms on off, then select the number of minutes you wish the alarms to be suspended for. Even though the alarms are off, the pneumatic system is still being assessed for potential problems. A message will be displayed on the screen if a potential problem has been detected. Assess the balloon pressure waveform to see if the problem is continuing to occur. While the pneumatic alarms are off, a message, alarms off, will be displayed on the screen as well as a bell counting down until the alarms are reactivated. If you wish the alarms reactivated before the time is up, simply press the alarms on off key. Never leave a patient unattended while the pneumatic alarms are suspended. The trigger loss alarms will cause the pump to go to standby as pumping cannot occur without a trigger. As soon as an appropriate trigger is re-established, pumping will automatically resume. The other alarms alerts do not interrupt pumping, but call your attention to actions you may need to take, such as changing the helium tank or battery status level. Refer to the operator's manual for a full review of the available alerts. Arrow International is here to assist you with all your balloon pumping needs. The AutoCat 2 series is designed to optimize patient support and minimize intervention required by the practitioner. If you have any questions or concerns, please call your local sales representative or our 24-hour intra-aortic balloon product hotline staffed by a team of service and clinical support specialists. The 24-hour intra-aortic balloon product hotline number is 1-800-447-IABP in the United States and Canada. The worldwide support number is 1-617-389-8628.